Tsar in a coma from poisoning, the queen was so happy that she spun in circles. <laughs> But she was too happy too soon, because the poison was not fatal. The Tsar woke up again, Peter came back to life and tried to find out who had poisoned him, but he killed all the cooks but had no clue. The real poisoner was his favorite and best friend. He couldn't stand Peter's illicit affair with his wife anymore. And after this, Catherine realizes that her plan is premature. She began to infiltrate Peter ideologically and culturally. She improved the ball causing game even further. future is bright. Then she gave Peter a gift. It was a printing press that could not only print words but also pictures. It would allow him to print a whole new Russia. Peter was gradually influenced by Catherine and took the palace to hold science parties and learn about and study science. But at that moment, the queen's servant gets smallpox. Catherine wanted a doctor to treat him, but the doctor said that the Tsar had made it a rule that doctors only treated the nobility. The slaves of the lower classes were usually burned on a large scale. Catherine said we can't just burn them, but the other noble women said of course they could because they were servants. Peter had no intention of listening to Catherine's pleas. He sent her servant to the countryside anyway. By the time Catherine arrived, the servant was not breathing. She had to convince Peter with more practical actions. Catherine had read about smallpox inoculation in a book. She marched up to the crowd and slashed her palm with a knife. She implanted a small amount of the collected virus into herself. This effectively prevented this terrible disease. The Tsar thought she was crazy, so he had his soldiers drag her away and take her to a room for isolation. After a full night, Catherine had no symptoms, but when she saw the flames burning outside the window, she realized once again that the country was in shambles. She began to prepare detailed plans for every aspect of the church, the army, and the court. But the fickle Peter began to see the good in Catherine. He often sends her big diamonds to please her. Tonight the Swedish ambassador is coming to the palace for dinner. Peter doesn't care about the war at all. He ordered that the ambassador's head be cut off on the spot. When Catherine learned it of this, she realized that it would not be conducive to peace. So she began to flatter Peter by telling him that if he made peace, the people would admire him. Peter was so excited to hear this that he gestured for the general to stop, but the meaning of his gesture did not seem obvious. No! Soon the day of negotiations between Russia and Switzerland arrived. Catherine, as queen, went with the Tsar to meet the king and queen of Switzerland. At the negotiating table, they attacked each other and fought. Can you imagine that these were the kings of two countries? When the others stopped the fight, the negotiations broke down completely. The war cannot be put to rest is not good for both countries. That's when Catherine stepped up to lobby between the two grumpy men. She worked out a plan that was good for both countries. Finally, they shake hands and make peace. This demonstrates her great ability and cleverness. On the way back, she took the opportunity to draw in the general. And he had just seen what she could do. That at least proved she was better than Peter. So he joined Catherine's team. And Leo, the lover Peter gave her, Made Catherine fall in love? She wanted Leo to stand with her towards victory. So, the five-member coup team was formed. And the next step is to secretly lobby the ministers and plant the seeds of rebellion in their hearts. <laughs> but while they were trying to bring the ministers together, Leo accidentally revealed that the mastermind of the coup was the queen. This led to their failure to persuade them. So they had to kill them with the strange death of the minister and the Tsar's bodyguard drowned himself due to drunkenness. All of these events were signs of danger to the royal family. Peter ordered everyone in the palace to be tortured in order to find out who was trying to kill him. Pulling fingernails, electric shocks, and mental torture. This was even more horrible than the guillotine. And Catherine sent herself to the torture chamber to gain the Tsar's trust. I am but Peter was so distressed that he called a halt to the torture. He also bandaged her wounds. And then a minister, with a long-standing grudge, rushed out to assassinate Peter. But he was killed on the spot by his best friend and his mistress. Catherine stayed where she was, terrified, because this man is the one they turned. It was the maid Mariel who pushed him out to defend the group from the knife. Peter thinks he's finally found the traitor and stops the interrogation. In the evening, he even hosted a dinner for everyone. But by now, people were on edge. The monarch before them was so violent and ruthless. Where was the hope for their lives? At that moment, the queen slowly stood up. She felt sadness and grief for the people, but she also saw their unity, their love for Russia, and their hope for a brighter future would unite them. Everyone stood up and applauded the queen. What she wanted for her birthday was extraordinary. Russia, today. 
After the Tsar said, I love you to the queen, the empress found out she was pregnant. She couldn't wait until the baby was born, or she would lose her right to be first in line to the throne. So on this very day, she's going to assassinate Tsar Peter and seize power. First she takes lessons from the general on how to kill. Then she puts on her robe, picks up her weapon, and walks into Peter's room. Huzzah! Happy birthday! Thank you, husband. But before she could act, Peter was the first to offer his gift. He brought Voltaire directly to the queen to please her. But it was the right gift. Catherine couldn't assassinate her husband in front of her idol. And since Peter had fallen in love with Catherine, he had been doing things to her liking. Catherine was almost touched by him. After sending Voltaire away, Peter takes out a letter and says it's a farewell letter from her lover. Leo, when Peter fell in love with Catherine, he could not tolerate Leo's continued existence. Catherine immediately realizes that Leo is in danger. She pulls herself away from the emotion she has just felt. Then she pulls out her knife and starts to kill her husband. But her power is still too small. She failed to kill, but was instead locked up by Peter. At that moment, Marielle, who had been encouraging the Empress to stage a coup, confessed to the Tsar about the Empress' plans in order to get back her nobility. He was so angry that he found Catherine. But then Catherine tells Peter that she is pregnant. Say hello. No. He's really there. Peter still can't control the pleasure of becoming a father. Hello, Paul. It's me, Daddy. But he had one more question. He doesn't understand why Catherine doesn't love him. Catherine says she loves him too, but she loves Russia more. Peter is at his wit's end. He grabs her lover, Leo, and tries to blackmail Catherine into stopping. But for Catherine, who wants to do great things, any love can be thrown away in front of her career. She gives the general the signal to start a coup immediately. This is the end of the first season of the American series, called The Great. Many people say that the plot is too outrageous and not in line with historical facts. But the opening credits of the show tell everyone that this is an occasionally true story. This is not a biography of Catherine the Great. It is a pure costume drama.